Welcome to Lesson 7, Memory, Retrieval Failure Due to Absence of Cues. My name is Nick Redshaw and I have over 16 years teaching experience of A-Level Psychology. I'm also co-author of the highly su successful independent learner series of student workbooks available exclusively on Amazon. Retrieval Failure Due to Absence of Cues. Thinking back to the task that you completed at the start of this unit, take a look at your list of items. Did anything make it easier for you to remember certain items? It is likely that you categorise certain items such as the diamond, heart, club and spade in order to make them easier to remember. Therefore, categorising helps you organise material or information, making it easier to retrieve. So in many cases, the information is stored in our memory. It is just that we cannot access it without the appropriate cues. With the appropriate cues, the information becomes available, and in terms of forgetting, an absence of appropriate cues will lead to retrieval failure. Tolving, in 1983, was interested in retrieval failure, and identified from the findings of research that in order to, for us to access information using appropriate cues, they has to be present at the time of encoding, and subsequently at the time of retrieval. This is known as the encoding specificity principle. The cues can be external, or internal and include the following types. Context dependent forgetting, external cues. State dependent forgetting, internal cues. And that organization also plays an important role. Context dependent for forgetting, external cues. Have you ever been upstairs, wanted something that is downstairs, gone downstairs and then forgotten what you wanted? In fact, it is only when you go back upstairs again that you remember what it was that you wanted. When you store something in memory, the memory is not just of the item being stored, but also of the context in which the memory occurred. The context becomes an external cue attached to it, such as location or physical condition. This whole process is known as context-dependent memory. Abernethy, in 1940, was interested in looking at whether external cues improve memory recall. He studied a group of psychology students who had their lessons in the same room and with the same lecturer each week. At the end of each week, some were tested in the same room with the same lecturer, others in a different room with a different lecturer. He found that those students who were tested in the different room with a different lecturer performed worse in the tests. Therefore, the external cues available when they were learning the information were not available at the time of recall, i.e. when they were sitting at the test. This led to retrieval failure. Gone and badly in 1975, the study of context-dependent retrieval. The aim, to investigate the importance of external settings on retrieval failure. The procedure, a field experiment. Participants were qualified scuba divers who were asked to learn a list of words on land and a list of words underwater. They were then asked to recall the words in the same setting, land, land, and water, water, and in the opposite setting, land, water, and water, land. The results are summarised in Table 1. The mean number of words recalled, in this case land, land, 13.5, land, water, 8.4, water, land, 8.6, water, water, 11.4. If you're using one of our workbooks or your teacher has downloaded our workbook from TESS or on a piece of paper, please complete the following graph worth four marks. You may want to pause the video at this point. Don't worry about it being too tidy. Okay, welcome back. So for four marks, you need an appropriate title, a further two marks correctly labeled axes, and a further one mark correctly plotting the bar chart. So your bar chart should look something like this. Graph 1, bar chart, the mean number of words recalled in each environment, your title, recall in environment on the axes, along the bottom, learning environment, or the other way around, depending on which way you've done it, and the bars as such. So the next one, what conclusions can you draw from the descriptive statistics about the importance of external settings on retrieval failure? Again, you may want to pause the video at this point while you complete the answer. 
So welcome back. The researcher might conclude that the retrieval is better when the recall environment matches the learning environment. For example, land, land, the mean recall is 13.5, compared to land, to water, where the mean recall is 8.4. The study was a field experiment. Discuss one strength and one limitation of using a field experiment in the context of this study. Okay then, welcome back. Simply an advantage of a field experiment is that it takes place in a natural setting and is less artificial than a lab experiment, so usually has greater mundane realism. As the participants were qualified scuba divers, they were asked to carry out a task they would be expected to do in normal diving situation, i.e. learn a list of words on land and a list of words underwater. It, ma it made the recall of the list in the same and opposite settings more realistic, thus increasing the validity of the findings. Disadvantage-wise, the natural setting makes controlling extraneous variables more difficult, which means that confounding variables may be causing the effect on the DV rather than the IV. So internal validity is lower and it's difficult to infer cause and effect. The study can be criticised for lacking ecological validity. Explain why in the context of this study. Again, you may want to pause the video at this point. OK, welcome back. The task of learning the list of words on land and underwater may be relevant to scuba divers, but it is not typical of real life. Therefore, it lacks ecological validity, so it can be criticised for being low in external validity, i.e. not testing what it should be testing, making it hard to generalise the findings. Moving on, state-dependent forgetting, internal cues. When internal cues are linked to memory, such as emotional reactions and feelings, it is known as mood-state-dependent memory. People tend to remember information better when there is a match between their mood at learning and their mood at retrieval. Ukras, 1989, found that the effects are stronger when the participants are in a positive mood than in a negative mood. Goodwin et al., 1969, investigated the, the effects of alcohol on state-dependent forgetting. Their findings showed that people were more likely to recall information that they had learnt when drunk if they were in the same state again. For example, if a person hid money when drunk, they were unlikely to find it when sober, but could recall the information about the hiding place when in a drunken state again. Other studies have found similar results. When participants were given mood-changing drugs, such as antihistamine tablets, Carter and Cassidy, 1998. Further support for state-dependent forgetting is shown in a study by Leite and Ellis in 1981, who looked at how depressed moods affect recall. In two experiments, participants were exp experimentally induced into a depressed state to determine the effects on recall and chunking of letter sequences. They found that depressed mood hindered both recall and chunking. Okay, so in your workbook, identify possible ethical concerns with the studies investigating state-dependent forgetting that are outlined above and how psychologists should deal with these issues. Again, you may want to pause the video at this point. And welcome back. I mean, taking a look at the um, studies, the studies involve alcohol, the study involve giving people drugs, the studies involve uh, inducing depressed states. I mean, clearly there is a protection element here. There is an issue here. So protection from harm is probably a likely one that you've said here. Yep. I mean... To expand on this one, I mean, obviously ensuring that pregnant women and traditional and religious groups aren't part of the study because you'd need to protect them even more. Okay, so I mean, obviously ensuring that they're not involved would be a way of dealing with that. Informed consent. Informed consent is generally knowing all about the study but also you have a moral duty as the investigator to ensure the participants are legally competent to give informed consent, i.e. we're dealing with alcohol here, so obviously people have to be old enough. In Britain, obviously 18, in America, probably 21. The right to withdraw. It is important here to, as the investigator needs to reorganise the studies involving alcohol, and this attracts vulnerable people. So you need to ensure as an investigator that your participants aren't from vulnerable groups. Organisation. 
Mandler, in 1967, was interested in how organisation creates a lasting memory. He believed that poor organisation leads to retrieval failure. In order to demonstrate this, he conducted a lab experiment where he gave participants a pack of 52 picture cards, each with a word printed on it. Participants were asked to organise the cards into piles using anything between two to seven categories of their choice. After an hour, they were then asked to carry out an unexpected free recall test on the words of, on the cards. Mandler found that the recall was poorest for those participants who only used two categories and best for those who used seven categories. Mandler con concluded that those participants who used fewer categories were less organised and therefore did not have the cues necessary for successful recall. Okay, finally then, moving on to your homework independent task. Marta is studying, studying for a modern language exams. She revises German followed by Spanish on the same night and then gets confused between the two. For example, she remembers the German word for table instead of the Spanish word for table. Sometimes her mum helps to test her vocabulary. When she is unable to remember a word, her mum tells her the first letter. Then she can often recall it correctly. Discuss, discuss two explanations for forgetting. Refer to Marta's experience in your answer. This is for 12 marks. In the full A level, it would be worth 16 marks. There's no real addition to those 16 marks. I mean, obviously, AO1 would be 6, AO2 would be 4, and AO3 would be 6. So one mark more for AO1, one mark more for AO3, and two marks more for applying it to Marta's situation. So you may want to pause here and come back in 15 to 20 minutes time for us to discuss your answer. So welcome back. So AO1, possible content. So if you're doing the full A level up to six marks for knowledge and understanding of two explanations of forgetting. So here psychologists have identified that one explanation of forgetting is interference, which is where one set of information becomes confused with another. German, Spanish. Proactive interference is when past information prevents the recall of recently learnt information. Retroactive interference is where new information prevents recall of previously learnt information. Retrieval failure is where information is, av is available but cannot be recalled because of the absence of appropriate cues. Types of cues that have been studied by psychologists including context, state and organisation. And obviously Abernethy, Godden and Badley's research could be outlined here. Cues improve recall if recall is in the same context as learning, if the person is in the same bodily state as when the material was learnt, if the organisation gives structure which provides triggers, i.e. categories, or alcohol studies could also be sort of discussed here. Don't forget you're only looking for six marks of AO1 though. AO2, the possible application point. German and Spanish are similar types of material which makes interference more likely. Recalling the German word for table is proactive interference. Marta's mum giving her cues first list, which can then be used for, for her to access the material she has failed to retrieve. AO3, possible discussion points. Up to six marks if you're doing the full A level here. Use of evidence to support or contradict explanations, Underwood and Postman, paired association learning tasks to investigate the role of retroactive and proactive interference. You could also look at uh, any, any evaluation of the research, i.e. lab experiments, high levels of control, re replication, reliability, cause and effect. I mean, discuss all of that in relation to this uh, question. Questions on whether interference involves overwriting of other information, the role of similarity in interference and response competition, issues of accessibility versus availability, semantic memory more resistant to interference than other types of memory, general implications for revision and other situations, relevant links to memory, theory, and so on and so on, i.e. multi-store model of memory, working memory model, levels of processing, okay? All of that can be found in our sort of workbooks on the actual strengths and weaknesses evaluation sections. Okay, thank you very much, and that brings us to the end of this session. Hopefully, I'll see you in the next session.